What do you have to throw away? What do you have to break in 2020? What do you have to throw in the garbage? What do you have to stop doing? Welcome to the Dean Graziosi Show. All success starts right here. I was reading a Jim Rohn book, just reading it a week ago, and it was really cool. Uh, he brought up discipline, and uh, I love Jim Rohn. It's so simple. I love Earl Nightingale and Dale Carney. I love those simple messages. Oh my God, like you go back, sometimes we just make, we make it too complicated. It's simplicity on the other side of complexity. I didn't make that up, that's someone else's saying. But sometimes we make it so complicated in today's world and, and alignment and all this stuff, and it's like, sometimes it's just like, let's just get right to it. How's your discipline? Like he used this example, he said, if you're a salesperson and your discipline is 10 cold calls a day, he said, failure doesn't happen overnight. Failure takes time. It just seems like it happens overnight. So you tried sales for six months, it didn't work, and one day I failed, I'm not a good salesman, and you quit. But somebody right next to you is crushing it in sales. They're making 150 grand a year, 200 grand a year, and you're struggling. He got, got, got lucky. You got better leads, whatever you want to make the excuse of, or you can look at your discipline. You can look at your mastery, your commitment, your patience, the thing that's getting your attention. Because if you said I'm gonna make 10 calls a day and you only make seven, five, three, nine, you never really hit 10, isn't that cumulative? Six months later, you're a failure. Did it take, was it that day you failed? Or was it because you didn't discipline yourself to meet your goals? That person sitting along next to you, when you make your first call at uh, 11, I mean you, but the person that didn't make it, make the first call at 11 and that person's already had four calls in because they started at seven. That person discipline was the same as yours. Let's make 10 calls a day. But they're doing 12, 14, 16, 11, 19. That's cumulative too. So at the end of six months, both of you kind of had a discipline. One of you fell short and added up failure. One of you passed the discipline. Six months later, you're the winner. You're number one. You evolve. Start your own business. Go to the next level, right? So the thing I want you to remember here at this point is it does take discipline. It does take mastery. And sometimes mastery happens in a year. Sometimes mastery happens in three, five, ten years. I still feel like I'm mastering this skill. Well, Tony and I were in Fiji with some of the, uh, our top partners in, in KBB. And he just looked at the audience and said, who in here has been in business less than 10 years? And he said, most of, all of us, like, only there's like 10 of us, a really intimate mastermind. And uh, he's like, none of you have truly mastered what you're doing. Yes, you're, everybody in the room was massively successful, making great money, impacting lives, good people. He said, but mastery, just fight for mastery. You guys don't know what it's like until you fail bigger, until the economy boosts, uh, bombs, and the bottom falls out. You haven't been, even, haven't been through that yet. He's like, that's okay, that's how mastery is created. That's how the wisdom is built. And I looked at it and I heard, uh, Tony gave some great examples of his life. He said, you know, when I was on stages and it wasn't that, it was, it was okay, he's making good money, impacting a good amount of people's lives. He'd meet someone in the nutrition field and like, oh man, all you do is sell supplements? That seems so easy, I should try that. And he dabbled in that and it failed. And then it was something else and he dabbled in it and that failed. And he's like, damn, all right, I'll just go back to impacting lives because I love it. It's my drive. It's what I was put on this earth to do. And then one day he realized, what a fool. I haven't mastered what I do. He asked, Tony was probably the number one inspirational business coach, trainer on the planet when he said this. But he's like, I'm not even close to mastering this. I'm going to go deeper. I'm going to get more scars. I'm going to gain more wisdom. I'm going to go deeper until I truly master this. And then once this is mastered, then I'll diversify. Tony, Tony Robbins, probably 10 to 15 years in, starts to go deeper, starts to master what he's done. Look what he's done over the last 10 years. 10 years ago, there was a couple thousand, 2,500 people at Date With Destiny. His last one was at 18,000 people, or a UPW. Date With Destiny used to be 1,500 people, now it's 6,000. He just got done speaking to 35,000 people out of the country. He's going to speak to 80,000 people this year. It's crazy because he said he went deeper on his mastery when he thought he was at its limits. He said he wasn't even close. And now what does he do? He takes the overflow of the revenue he makes and he's in 50-something companies doing billions of dollars because he didn't diversify until the mastery was there. He tried. It's kind of like dabbling. So think about it. If you've tried for six months and it's not working, come on. We got plenty of time. Time's gonna pass anyway. Go deeper, go harder, go stronger, have the patience, commit to it. 
and let's master what we do. But if you're gonna set goals at work, you're gonna have to figure out what you have to stop doing. You absolutely have to figure out what you're gonna stop doing because you just need more time. You need more time for growth. You need more time for abundance. You need more time for self-education. You need more time to be with your family. You need more time to make an impact on those you want. You need more time to make money, drive the business, expand the business, gain capabilities once you start, turn it into a business, scale it, grow it, bigger, bigger, stronger, more impact. You need more time. They don't make more time, sorry. I always hear people say, I wish I could have 48 hours in a day. It's like, no, you just don't have focus. You don't have clarity, you're not sure where you're going. So, if you know what success means to you, you know who you want to become, you know that story that you wanna get rid of, you wanna remember what, uh, that success, success takes mastery. Now let's decide, what do you have to throw away? What do you have to break in 2020? What do you have to throw in the garbage? What do you have to stop doing? So many people say, oh, I did your not to-do list. I said, great, what did you stop doing? Um, nothing yet. It's like, oh my God. Then don't tell me you already get, went through it and you wanna go on to the next thing. You didn't take this first good advice, why should you get second good advice, right? So literally, take the time today, tomorrow, and figure out what you gotta stop doing. Legit, just, just throw it away. Some things are hard, and as, just so you know, the more success, and so many of you I know are massively successful. I'm not teaching you how to be successful. I'm teaching you how to go to another level from what I've experienced. And this has been my experience, is it gets harder because the more stuff you throw away, you throw away the easy stuff. Now it's time to go upstream and throw away some harder stuff or let someone else do it or get a virtual assistant or pay an assistant to help you or get an intern or automate it or delegate it or just toss it in the garbage, make the hard decisions, open up three or four hours a week. Just do it. What is the biggest challenge, fear, or obstacle, or decision that you had put off in 2019 that you must overcome in 2020? What is it? Is it a fear of public speaking? Is that what's holding you back? Is it a fear of making your first call? Is it a fear of putting yourself out there? Is it a fear of telling your family you want to do something different? Uh, you know, Wasi comes to mind. Uh, he's a great part of our community. He's going to be a part of our team now, too. Amazing guy. Wasi well, went to school for nine years. He's a medical doctor. He has the bills and the school loans, and he has a whole family that were so proud of him to be a medical doctor. And he knew it wasn't in his heart, and that's something he thought about all the time. And when KBB came along, he finally made the decision, and he did it. And his, after he did his first mastermind, he literally quit his job. Can't even imagine, but he, that decision was in his head for a long time, and he finally made it. Listen. My ex, uh, my ex and I, uh, my previous wife and I, knew that our relationship was over for a long time, but we just didn't want to do it because of the kids. Didn't want to do it because of the kids, and it painstaked us both for years. We knew it, and it was like on the edge, and we ignored it. It was painful, but neither one of our lives were growing. Our kids weren't seeing an example of a good family until we finally made that decision. Now, I'm not an advocate of divorce in any way. Make the decision to fix it. Make the decision to go deeper whatever it is, but just make the damn decision because that fearful thing, that obstacle, that worry that you have, it drains the energy off the top. I don't know how to explain it. It's just enough to keep you to move slower. I, I can only share this through experience. I remember going after next level business and being afraid for two years, but when I finally went, freaking opened me up, like ripped me open. When I finally made the decision that we were gonna end the marriage and be friends and, and like, ripped me open a whole nother, I became a better human being. I navigated new territory. I conquered something. I conquered my first, biggest fear. You know what it's like standing on the edge? You wanna jump? When you've jumped in your, in your life, even if, if you failed or succeeded, you know you went after it and there's a way you feel. There's also the time you walk up to the edge, you look and you go, not now, and you turn around and that, you know how that feels. And that's cumulative too. And then you start saying no to a lot of things and all of a sudden you're 90 and you go look back and you missed it. Hell, hell with that, you're not missing it. Not on our watch. Not on our watch are you missing this. So how are you guys doing? Are you with me? Are you listening? I know you've heard it but take what serves you, throw the rest away. But let me give you this last one, and that is your happiness. This is, this is probably gonna be completely like, where's this one coming from? Happiness, and I wrote down, happiness is a choice. It's already inside all of us. How can you unlock it more in 2020? Because the greatest form of failure is success without happiness. Now, I don't 
want to act like I have this perfect. Sometimes I forget to congratulate myself. I forget to pat myself on the back for my accomplishments. Sometimes my kids will always say to me, Dad, whatever they ask me, I'm like, oh, it's, it's okay, it's good. And my kids will go, Dad, is everything okay and good? It's like, I go get my tooth pulled. And I don't have a tooth pulled, but like a crown on. He's like, how was it? I was like, okay, guys, no big deal. But then they're like, hey, Dad, I heard your launch went amazing. How was it? It was, oh, it was okay, it was amazing, it was great. I do that sometimes, subcon like in these states, yay. But in when I'm not in this state, everything like sometimes I can just be okay about it. I can be okay when things go wrong, and I can be really okay when things go amazingly right. And I forget to celebrate. I forget to let the happiness ooze out. I forget the self pat on the back. So I say this to you. Maybe you got this handled. I met so many great people in the last. So many KBB family members. You got this happiness factor, but. Are you celebrating and letting that happiness out enough? Because here's what I know. You already have like you already have the happiness. It lives inside of us. It's just unzipping it and letting it out. And I'm going to ask you to give yourself permission to be happier this year. Don't be happy once you achieve. Be happy along the way and you will achieve faster. Did you hear that? Don't be happy once you achieve it. Find a way to be happy along the journey and I promise you the success will come faster. I promise you with all of me, it will come faster. What's up, what's up? Hey, before you go, you need to watch these next few videos. They're absolute game changers. Hurry up and click right over here and watch them and I'll see you there.